of Flower Wool and welcome to a brand new episode of New Start Monday Knits. I'm just going to kind of just rearrange this just a little bit while we're waiting for people to join us. So how has everybody's knitting week been since we chatted last Monday? I have had a great week. I've got lots done. I actually got, have a couple of finishes to show you. So we'll just wait here for another few seconds to see if anybody else is going to jump in here live. I will show you the yarn combination that won this week's Instagram poll. You all know I put up an Instagram poll every Monday asking for your input of what this week's new cast on will be. Hey Lisa, how are you? So I have got the winning combination to show you. I have three projects that I worked on last week and I have an update on last week's new start. And if I remember, I will chat about the new knit along that the Fiber Friends are going to do. So without further ado, what yarn did you guys vote for? I picked some nice summery colors today. I wanted to do another stranded color work project. I'm not sure if it'll be a pot holder or a dishcloth. We'll see how thick it comes out. I guess it depends if I do it in the round or not. I guess we'll say a pot holder. So first color combination was Bernat Handicrafter. So it's 100% cotton. Where's my, there we go. Bernat Handicrafter. Hi, Amber. And this color was pretty in pink. And this was hot green. Hey, Joanne. So colorway number one, colorway number two was another Bernat Handicrafter. This one was Coral Sea, I do believe. Yep, Coral Sea, very pretty. And I picked to go with it a Dishy, Knit Picks Dishy and hi Kate. It is, I call this teal, but the actual colorway is I don't know how to spell, spell it or how to say it. Can I? K-E-N-A-I. Anyways, it's kind of a tealy, aqua color. And put those together. Amber's saying number two. Hi, Anne. You always pick. Oh, you always pick. <laughs> so you didn't cast a vote. Anne, come on. It doesn't matter. It's all in fun. I Well, you know what? I really like them both, too. I like this one because... It has has a little bit, almost the same color, tealy color in there. Oh, Joanne, you like the teal? But I like the I like the corally color, kind of as like a pink and a coral in there, and I really like that together. But I like this just because it is so bright and fun and summery. Oh, Jocelyn, you forgot to vote. That's all right. We had lots of votes today, and you know what? The winning color combination that one was almost 50% ahead. Well, it did kind of surprise me. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Sherry. So, okay, this is where I feel like I need that drum roll. The winner is teal, teal and coral. <laughs> So anyways, I actually thought this would be the color combo that you guys would pick. This this to me just shouts summertime picnic kind of thing. But no, this was the one. Everybody like well, everybody. Over half the people like this one. And I had um, Tracy messaged me and she said definitely darker colors. She's thinking way too practical. She's thinking in case you spill anything, you want darker colors. <laughs> So that is a very good point, too. Okay, so Jocelyn, you're saying you would you would have voted. If you had had time, this is the color combo. Well, this definitely seemed to be the one. So, Anne, would you have picked this one? You always you just told me that you always pick the, the uh, I don't want to say the losing color, but uh, you've done so close to the first, oh, a few times. Well... Yeah, that's true. I have had, I mean, I, I guess a lot of my stash, I do have kind of the same colors kind of over and over, don't I? Anyways, this is helping me knit down some of my stash. So this is going to be two color. I think I'll do it in the round, just like I had been doing. So I'll make it into a pot holder. And what I think I'd like to do 
<laughs> um, oh, and you don't know, you said you like both. I know they, they are, it is kind of, it's a, it's a win-win no matter what, right? Cause they are both very pretty. So I think I'll do this, my main color, and then I'm going to do some, um, chevron stripes. <laughs> chevron stripes, you know, V's with the variegated. I think it'll look pretty. So that will be this week's little project to work on. I can't wait. I think it's going to be fun. Something really fun colors. Last week's new start was not as bright color. So it doesn't feel quite as summery. Well, it is a cowl knit out of wool. So it's not really meant to be summery, but I'm kind of excited. This kind of looks like it reminds me of beachy colors as well. It's fun. Do you want to see what I got finished? Oh, <laughs> Amber's already reminding me of what what I have left to do. I know. Well, we have got, okay, I'll talk about that in a minute or two. Anyways, here is one of the little finishes. The Fiber Friends Toy Knit Along finished up a week, a week ago. And I didn't get this done within our 10 day time frame for our little knit along, but I knit him afterwards because he was on my list to knit. This is Beans the Cat. And if you are looking for, like seriously, a three hour project, something to knit in the evening, something to add to a gift, I don't know, just knit for yourself because it's cute. This is the little guy. So his little tail is attached back here. It's just I-cord. This is a free pattern. It's on Ravelry. Really, really easy. I know. Isn't he cute? And I had forgotten when I showed him before in the Fiber Friends podcast, I realized I'd forgotten to put his whiskers on. So he now has whiskers. I know. Love his whiskers, right, Anne? Oh, you kept... Well, see, and I don't... Yeah, these ones here are kind of... I don't know. Anyways, I think it's just extra character. If they droop, whatever. Anyways, he's super cute, super fast. Be a fun little project. It would may, might even be, hmm, I don't know if it would be good for kids. I mean, the kids would like the finished product for sure. The other thing I finished, you guys, if you've been following it all along with Jocelyn and I last Thursday night when we talked about our May Whip Challenge reveal, you will have seen my sweater. But if you happen to have missed that, and if you didn't catch it on the Friday or the, the Saturday, past Saturday's Fiber Friends, here it is. My orange top. It is done and it fits great. Fits good. I did adjust the armhole length. The, um, the pattern, they had it down, I don't know, a couple inches lower and it was way too open. So I sewed it up a little bit. And I love it. I love this neckline. It's a square neckline. Super easy. Really nice. I did make it a little shorter. I know even that it looks here. It looks super long, doesn't it? But I actually made it, hmm, I don't know, probably at least four inches shorter than what the pattern called for. And it was the perfect. It just kind of sits right at hip, the top of my hip. Perfect, perfect length. Did, did well on this one. Remember my last, sum, last summer's summer top? It was that crop top. I thought, oh, I'll try it. You know, they're in style, whatever. Uh-uh. I wore it. I did wear it a couple times last summer, but I did not like it. And I will not wear it this summer. <laughs> so I will maybe gift it to somebody else who does like that style. This one here worked out way, way better. Oh, talking about Jocelyn and I's, you guys probably all know that Jocelyn and I get together the first Thursday of every month to talk about what our whip project's going to be for the upcoming month and to give a, a reveal of what we had accomplished from the last month. So both Jocelyn and I accomplished our goals I got my, my goal was to get the orange sweater finished, which I did. This month's goal is to get my European road trip shawl finished. You guys talked me into, hey Zakia, 
Hi, so I just want to say a quick hi to any somebody. And I've seen some comments going by on the screen. So if I've missed you, welcome. I'm glad that you're hanging out. Hopefully you've got your knitting kicking back after a long day and just relaxing for a little bit. So, so you guys all convinced me. Maybe it was maybe it was Jocelyn. Maybe we'll we'll blame it on Jocelyn that said, "Oh, go ahead, try you know, try to see if you can get your, the whole shawl finished." This is a big shawl, you guys. It um, thanks Sabrina. It takes about three or four hundred, hundred gram skeins. It's fourteen hundred meters. Of, of yarn anyways so I figured with my 50 gram balls I was going to need six and a half balls and I'm knitting it out of surprise surprise a Patton's Croy sock yarn this is one of the yarns it's been discontinued unfortunately because this stuff is really nice and uh, the Patton stretch socks and it colorway is licorice, which I love. I love, I love yarns that have a fun name. Sometimes that makes or breaks which one, which yarn I'm going to actually try, or which one I'm going to use. So licorice. So there's a nice close up. It's kind of that black, gray, variegated, and I really like how it's knitting up. I'm just on the straight part now, so it is just relaxing knitting, stockinette. And if you guys haven't seen this pattern before. It, it's just, um, it's, it's just, yeah, back and forth. Now there was some shaping at, at both ends and the middle is stockinette. Um, so the, the edges do curl, but that's okay. And just back and forth. Perfect. You know, movie watching, whatever you're, whatever you're listening to. Perfect knitting. So I have a little bit of a plan again, trying to figure out how many days it is until July 1st because that's when Jocelyn and I will be doing a live here on the on the Wildflower World channel. So I'm trying to figure out how many grams I of yarn I have to knit every day and then I'm going to weigh my balls and um, hopefully be on track. Hopefully I'll see if I can get it done. We'll see. It might be a little, well it will be a challenge. It'll be a challenge for sure. Fewer than 27 days. Jocelyn, are you already counting? <laughs> I know. It, and we think, oh, well, we have the whole month, right? We have the whole month. But it, um, those months, those days tick down pretty darn quick, don't they? So I have got that. But it has been, that's been my, oh, I could show you how much I've got done. It is, it's been my weekend knitting. Now, it, feel, it feels like I knit a lot on this, but hmm, I don't have too much progress there. So that was my weekend. I mean, a little bit is a little bit, right? It would, This was the project I would just pick up and I would try to do at least two rows or four rows, like knit and purl, and then I, I would do another knit and purl. And, you know, every row counts, right? It all adds up. So that is my project. That's another one that is kind of my no brain thinking project. I can just um, pick it up and carry on. So what else do I have to show you? I have got last week's new start Monday. And um, oh, what is that? Amber? I look like I'm halfway there on the European road trip shawl. Yeah, not quite. I'm not halfway yet, which <laughs> is, um, yeah, as far as meeting my goal, not quite as, you know, I'd love to be halfway, but it's a big shawl. It takes a lot of yarn, which I mean, I guess I could always, now there's a thought I hadn't thought of. I was just assuming I would knit it the entire length that they said, but maybe I might not want it that long. The whole idea of it is that the middle part you can knit, you know, as, as, as long or short as you want to, depending on how much yarn you've got. And then you need to keep so much set aside to do the shaping part at the end. I've got lots of yarn, so I don't think I will run out. I doubt I will run out. I'm pretty sure I've got lots of this yarn. At some point, I will run out of some croy, but not right yet. Last week's 
new start was this um, Patton's Classic Wool DK. It's a super wash. And this was the apple green that you guys all voted for. I knew I wanted to use this as my main color. And uh, what color is it? Olive green? No, deep, deep olive is what it's called. This is apple green. Yep, apple green. And the, the voting was between apple green and a pink. And you guys voted for the green. And it looks good. Now, I am not finished this. I, I got... This kind of got put on the back burner because I needed to get my, my orange sweater finished. So I worked on my orange sweater. I worked on the cat. And then, yeah, on the weekend, I was working on my European road trip shawl. But I did get a few rows done, a few rounds done on here. It, um, I did not get a whole repeat done. This is going to be a, a little bit larger repeat than some of the other patterns I've done lately. I'm close, but not quite. So this is a start. So I did just a little bit of ribbing on here and then started the color work pattern, which I am actually have to say I am loving right now. This, this project, if I'm being totally honest, was difficult for me to get started and I don't know why. Oh, thanks Kate. Yeah, you know what? I, I am loving it now. I had the worst time though getting it started. I knew I wanted to have a smaller needle size for the ribbing. Do you think I could find a needle size in that size? So, and I, so it took me a while to find a needle. So I think I went with a 3.75 and I went with a five for the color work. So I found a 3.75 and I really, really, really wanted a 16 inch needle because I like, I've said before, right? I just like for these cowls and the pot holders I've been doing and for hats, I just love any, any way, any technique that'll save me just the smidgenest little bit of time. And a 16 inch, you know, cause you just go round and round and round. There's no fiddling, whatever. I couldn't find, I could not find a 16 inch. So I had to grab a longer needle and I thought that's fine. I'm a capable knitter. I can magic loop. I can do it. I know I could not find needles. I know it's not, not the most ridiculous thing, but I can never find the right needle size when I want it. So I thought that's okay. I'll magic loop it. Well, you guys, I'm almost embarrassed to say this. <laughs> the first three times that I cast on and I joined in the round, I twisted it every time. <laughs> what was up with that? I was starting to think that this project was jinxed. I like, <laughs> I just, I restarted it at least four times. And, um, Anyways, I did the magic loop for the the uh, the ribbing, and then you can see here I I did find a five millimeter, sixteen inch, and I was so happy knitting that round where I was knitting it onto the sixteen inch needle. Oh, it just it just made me happy. <laughs> but it was just I don't know. But you know what? Thankful I was gonna say, I you're right in. I need an assistant to get my supplies together. <laughs> you're right. That's exactly what I need. Oh, so, you know, wouldn't that be fun? Anyways, I got it started, but it was, you know, it was one of those projects. I just thought, man, is this like a sign that I'm not supposed to be knitting this or something? But once I got it going, I really, really liked it. And I was just going to say that I have not made a mistake in the color work. I mean, not, I mean, once or twice a couple of rounds ago, I had to like pick back, I don't know, maybe like six or eight stitches because I had miscounted, but I caught it right off the bat. So it wasn't like I've had to go back at all and pull anything out. But I did notice on one of these, my little, my little center here, see how the bottom row is three stitches? right there. On this one, I should be one, two, three. Somehow I, uh, I missed the light, the light green 
in the center there. So what would you guys do if you were knitting this project? Would you leave that? Because probably who's going to notice it when you're wearing it? Or would you fix it? And a fix in color work like this, I used to always do a, uh, a duplicate stitch over that design choice. <laughs> exactly. I know. Well, you know what? I was looking at it and I thought, huh, you know, maybe next time if I, um, if I was to do this, I could just, that could be the pattern, right? Instead of being solid all the way across. Yeah, Katie's saying duplicate stitch later if it bothers you. You know, it's not really bothering me, but I might I might just fix it. Oh, Sherry's, yeah. Yeah. It's like design pattern, right? So, I don't know. I may even just fix it right now. Is that my ball of yarn's just falling on the floor? So what do I have? So I think I will just, have you guys all, I'm sure, has everybody done duplicate stitch that's here tonight? So easy. And it's such a great, a great way it to go back in color work because it's so easy to, you know, miscount a stitch and just knit, knit a stitch with that opposite color. So I'm just going to snip off. Catherine's saying duplicate stitch it. Yeah. It's just, it's two, makes two extra ends, right? Not everything is perfect. Well, you know what? And that's what I thought because you guys all know my first choice is to like, Meh. if I don't have to fix it, I probably won't, right? And, um, oh, so Joanne, you've done it long, long, long time ago. But I thought, and it wouldn't really, really bother me, especially if I was keeping this for me because I'm thinking, you're never, we're never really going to see it, but I thought, oh, well, we could, we could just fix it tonight and, and then it'll be fixed and then I won't have to worry about it. So there's the center stitch. So I will try to show you how to do it. Oh, Jocelyn, you've never done it yet? Well, you know, it works great. I mean, doing duplicate stitch, it works great for fixing a mistake like I'm going to do or going in afterwards. So if you have a pattern that maybe has three colors per row or say it was like the center, I want these are supposed to be flowers. So if I wanted the center stitch to be pink, right? And instead of carrying your pink all the way across and catching it all the way across on the back, you could just go in afterwards intentionally just do duplicate stitch and add pink in in every the center of every motif which um is done lots of times so for jocelyn for you got for you and joanne who hasn't done this in a really really long time it's super super easy and for anybody who watches the replay back if you haven't seen it just cut off a length of the yarn the color that you want put it on a darning needle you're going to bring the darning needle up through from the back so we're going to leave a tail on the inside. You're going to have to weave in the tail at the beginning, at the end of this. So what I'm, where I'm going to come up is the dark green stitch right at the bottom of the V. So right in here. So of right at the base of the stitch I want to cover. So I'm going to come in through here. And just leave a long enough tail down here that you can weave it in afterwards. Now, I want to go in, and your first thought might be you want to put your darning needle in at, right at the top where it's green. You want to go up one more row. So I'm going to go up into where my light green stitch is. So see, I've got my yarn has come through at the base. There's the green stitch I want to cover. My darning needle is picking up both of the legs of the stitch in the row above. And you just slide it through. And that makes one leg of the stitch. 
And now I'm going to come back down, go in where I started at the base of that green stitch. And now this is going to make the other leg. So we've already done this leg. And now by going down, we're doing the other. Oh, okay, we're back. Sorry, my internet looks like it's a little glitchy tonight. So fingers crossed, it will get through the rest of our chat. So, and that is all there is to it. So now obviously you're just gonna take and weave in your tails on the back side. And it does put an extra layer of yarn on top of that stitch, but not enough that you're gonna notice it. And just like that, it is fixed easy peasy so done now I think I'm on I am back on track I don't want to say perfect because there's probably is another mistake in here yes exactly it is just like magic isn't it it is not hard at all it is not hard at all I think the first time I did it the biggest thing I had to remember was going in and picking up both legs of that stitch going in the row above I, when I first did it, I was always trying to pick up the legs of the stitch that I wanted to cover. And it, it doesn't work that way. You have to go up a row. And it's easy peasy. Hey, Antoinette, how are you? Happy Monday. So simple, simple. I had thought, I think it was like Amber said how nothing is perfect. And, uh, and I had thought, oh yeah, I could just leave it. And that could be my, you know, my one little signature mistake. But um, I'm sure there's probably another signature mistake in here I just haven't seen yet. But anyways, I, I actually am really excited to get this finished. So it, hopefully, well, it better be finished for next week. Hopefully, I will be, ha be able to show you this finished cowl and the finished pot holder. So the finished pot holder, let's go back. Let's backtrack on that. So... So I'll just finish up here. So DK weight, I made the, I did my gauge to garment process with this. I knew I'm aiming for 24 inches in circumference because again, I'm going for something that's going to be warm, like something that you will wear um, more. I'm going for function over fashion with this one, right? I'm thinking something that if you go take the dog for a walk or you're going out and shoveling snow or something, you're going to want something that's going to keep you warm. So there's not going to be a whole um, lot of excess. I want it to fit fairly snugly. Oh, <laughs> Jocelyn, what was that? You add, oh, every time I say easy peasy, you add lemon squeezy. <laughs> oh, that was Amber. So, um, I, um, oh, what was I going to say here? Oh, oh yes. So 24 inches around. So I just, I went with my gauge, added on, you know, my gauge times the, um, circumference I wanted. And then I just adjusted a couple of stitches. So my stitch pattern would fit in here. And that's all I did. And I am going to hopefully get this to be right around nine inches. I will have to maybe play with it a little bit because this is a 12, 12, 13 row repeat. So it will, um, that, the, that's going to really dictate how tall this, this cowl is going to end up being. It's not like something where it's only four rows because then you can really just add, you know, four rows is about half an inch or something, give or take, right? So you can add one or two more and if you need it, but the bigger pattern, the row repeat kind of, you don't get your, your height quite as fine tuned as you would like it sometimes. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyways, so that is that. I'll, and I'll end off with another little bit of ribbing at the top. Cast off with a stretchy bind off. What pattern is it? Antoinette, it's just, I'm just making it up. I found a stitch pattern that I liked and then I kind of modified and took a few rows out of it. Um, and that's it. So I'm kind of liking these larger, larger shaped patterns right now. So that's fun. So fingers crossed. Stay tuned for a finish next week.
So back to the color work, the two colors. So for anybody who uh, just popped in, these are the two colors that won the Instagram poll. So my, my, my plan for this, so how I came up with a pot holder was the fact that I wanted to do color work and um, I'm going to try doing it all with my left hand because I always knit color work with one strand in each hand and I find it really super quick and that's generally how I, how I, I, I teach people how to do that but, um, but really, you know, you can do however it's comfortable, right? Holding both strands in your left hand or both strands in your right hand. Oh, Sabrina, you always pick the losing color every week. Well, that's okay. Because you, you want to know, I'll let you in on a secret. I would have picked the pink and the green myself. That that was the one. That's actually, I get to vote too. And that's the one I voted for. But this is okay. I like this color combo too. So you just never know which way people are going to vote. So this project, I wanted something simple, simple and quick. I really wanted something small and quick is what I want to say because I'm going to knit this holding both strands in my left hand because I would like to get really proficient with that. I can do it, but it is very slow and labored process, <laughs> but that's okay because you only, you only get better at it with practice. So a dishcloth or a pot holder should be um, a, the perfect project, right? That's how I picked this project because I thought this will be perfect. A dishcloth, a pot, um, pot holder, either way, if my tension is off a little bit, it's not going to matter because I think when I was doing a little bit playing around with it last week, my, I was finding my tension was really, really tight. So I've gone, I've got a larger needle. I'm going to do a six millimeter needle again for the, this worsted weight yarn. And hopefully, well, we'll come out with something. We'll see what it, see what my tension looks like. But I'm just really hoping that I can just really get the rhythm of having both strands over my left finger. Really hoping that by the, by the time I get it finished, I will be a lot more proficient and find it much more rhythmic and hopefully relaxing. And as a dishcloth, right? So if my gauge is all wonky, not a big deal. And the pattern I'm going to do with it is that chevron that I did with the, the purple and gray hat because there's no color. Oh, what color, what cast on am I going to use? Okay, I'll come back to that, Katie. So the, the little chevron pattern that I'm going to do there's no catching your float. So that is the one thing I don't even have to worry about with that. I can just knit, knit, follow a simple pattern and I will report back. Um, it's, it's well, it's going to go great because it can only go great. Hi, Susanna, because I am very open to learning. I would want, I want to be, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. And, uh, so I'm going to try it. So I'm going to try it without the yarn guide or the yarn ring. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but after last Monday, Marg sent me a link to the, um, I think it was an Etsy shop where she purchased her ring. It is gorgeous. It's actually really, really super pretty. Oh, a yarn guide. Okay, Mary. Yes, that's exactly. So you're talking about using the yarn guide. So I ha I have had one and I have one here. So if I can find it, I may try it again. But I know when I tried it before, I found it really awkward. But it's probably more so just the fact that it was something new and different to me. Not really just the yarn ring's fault, right? So I may try it again. And I may also order myself this really pretty one just because it was really pretty. <laughs> Who knows? Functionally, maybe it was better. And maybe I should have two yarn yarn guides to use. And because you never know, maybe one may be designed a little bit better. I don't know. Has anybody who uses them, have have you found one works better than the other? Like, do you have one that you don't like? There's a thought. There's a thought. I don't know. I may order. I may order it and try. But I would be happy if I could learn to do it without the yarn guide. But either or. I'm happy. I'll try either or. 
Exactly, Amber. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's trying learning how to write your name all over again. Yeah, because it's it's different, right? It's that different muscle memory that we're not used to. Oh, I will. I will definitely show show it to you, Mary, and I will let you know. I will, uh, yeah, put a link maybe down in the underneath this video, or I'll let you know next week what the uh, what the Etsy site is. I know it's just fun. It's there again. It's it's fun, and it's something for me to try new, and uh, not totally new because I have done it before, but I don't think I've ever stuck with a whole project. I know definitely not color work. I have, um, I don't even know if I've even done any dishcloths just doing continental. The only time I do continental is when I do color work because then I have a strand in each hand. So when I'm doing this guy here, was, that's a perfect example, right, Amber? Yeah, tr do both. I'm just worried. Well, I don't know. Should I say worried? If I start it with the yarn guide, Will I ever want to try to knit without it? Or does that even matter? Maybe not. I guess it's like Amber said, whatever's the most comfortable is the way to, um, is the way to do it, right? Oh, that's my tail. Okay. So, and for here on this pattern, I'm, okay, here's, here's a skill testing question for you guys. Do you guys remember it's talking about yarn dominance? The contrast color, if you're knitting with, well, if you have a yarn in either hand, or even if you have both strands in one hand, do you remember which, which side the contrast color goes on? I'll give you a second to see if anybody types in. So try without first and then go for the yarn guide. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Mary's saying you find your gauge is more consistent using the yarn guide. That's a good, okay, good. I like that. Since you're trying something new, try when German twist to cast on. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay. So, oh yes, I have, um, yeah, I've done, I like the German twist to cast on. I use it quite often, but what I will do for my pot holder, I am going to do a provisional tubular cast on. So I can then take it out and then Kitchener stitch it. So I'll have live stitches. Oh, Susanna, left. If you, oh, well, Susanna, you got the right um, left if you're right-handed. The right left, Lisa's saying. Okay, you guys got good, good answers. I'm glad you're guessing. So the contrast color always goes to the left. So if you are holding it in two strands, so this will be backwards to you guys, but so... My, my light green is my contrast, so I'm holding it in my left hand. If I'm going to carry both strands in my left hand, okay, let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, so here I am. I've got both strands in my left hand. My contrast color is on the left side of my main color. So it's on the left side. Is that backwards for you guys? If I hold it this way, it's on the left side. If I go to the right hand, I still want that contrast to be on the left. So I will switch. So here, so there's left and this is on the right side. It always goes left because it wants to go under. You're gonna carry it under. And this is a good example here. You can see this is being carried underneath the main color. So no matter how you carry it, how which yarn, which hands, which yarn is going where, contrast always goes left. Left, lower, loud is a, is a good little mantra to remember it. So this one here, I've been just knitting with one color in each hand. And... Um, yeah, it's definitely, it'll be, it'll be interesting to find out once I get a project done, carrying a color in both hands, carrying both colors in one hand. Oh my gosh, I can't even get the words right. <laughs> it'll be fun to see what I go back to at the end, right? What do I find is the most comfortable, a strand in each hand, or will I like it both? 
yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah, I think it's just going to take a little bit of practice. And I can't, I can't even knit on here because I have to count stitches. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to mess it up because I just said how I hadn't messed it up. So I don't want to, I don't want to blow that. So you guys, that is really everything that I have been knitting. Now the fiber fronts, we have got a new knit along started and it is going to start this coming Friday. So I know we just finished the toy and we're going to jump right into June's. And, uh, oh yeah, Sabrina, that's a good point. We tend to like what we learned first. You're right. Oh, Amber's counting for me. Yeah, there's not 12 stitches. <laughs> so Fiber Friends, if you didn't catch the podcast on the weekend, we have got our new, we've got another 10 day knitting challenge for you guys. It's going to start this coming Friday and it's a get her done or get her mostly done. <laughs> it is kind of one of those things. It's, t it's 10 days. It's just a quick little recharge to think about, do you have projects that, you know, are almost done? Do you have something that's finished, but just needs to be sewn up? Do you have something that just needs the ends woven? in? Do you have something Oh boy, we're having bad luck with the internet tonight. Sorry about that, guys. Or, um, yeah, so my sweater that's in a project bag. I've got my European road trip shawl. I've got my March socks. I've got lots of things. Or what I was going to say is you could pick up, so pick up something large like an afghan or a sweater. And something, even though you know you're not going to get it done in 10 days, but maybe it's been sitting in a project bag for a few months. It's like my sweater. And this will be just kind of a little encouragement to, uh, pull it out, get working on it, kind of get it back in the rotation and, you know, with the intention of getting it done in the near future, right? Oh, Jocelyn's saying you might finish the second sock during that cow. Yeah, because it's it's only 10 days and it's meant to be just like an intense jump start, jump in, get some things done. Susanna, you've got stuff in project bags for years. Well, you know what? Um, Cheryl talked about having a whip that she started for one of her girls who are now teenagers. So she's thinking um, that it's probably between 15, maybe 17, but I think she decided maybe it was, it was probably 15 years old and it just needs a zipper in it. And it was a little baby onesie or something that she had knit for one of her girls. So we had asked, does anybody have a whip that is older than 15 years. So Susanna, do you have anything that's older than that? I, at one point I did, but I did a, a few years ago with our guild. I ran a, um, some, a, a, a series of challenges and one of them was finding your oldest whip and getting it finished. So, hey, Teresa. Oh, Teresa, hi, how are you? So anyway, so I don't have anything that's, I don't think I do anyways. I've got a lot of unfinished projects, but I don't think all of my really old ones like that, I've either finished them off or I've pulled them out. Oh, okay, Suzanne. Oh, so you haven't even been knitting that long. Okay. So maybe Cheryl is going to win win as the, uh, the project that is the oldest. But we'll see. I'm going to try to talk her into showing some of her old whips on next weekend's podcast. So we'll see what some of them are. So yeah, what am I going to work on? I know I've got a lot to choose from. I think I'm going to pull out that sweater. I mean, I've got my European road trip. I mean, that's because Jocelyn and I are already working on a bit of a whip challenge. But I think I'm going to pull out something else. And I think it will be that sweater. The one that, the well, it looks black, but it's kind of a charcoal gray. And it was that top-down cardigan. So I might even just say in the 10 days... I know, even if I can get one sleeve done, the body's done. It just needs to, it just needs the sleeves. That's where I got stuck on because I have to find another needle size. And that's what, yes, my October sweater. Yes. And that's where I got stuck was because my gauge changed from knitting flat to knitting in the round. And I would kind of hummed and hawed if, if I could live with, live with it, but I think I can't, I can't. I look at it and I just zero in right on the fact that I think those stitches look smaller than the body and it's driving me bonkers. So 
And, but how, I can't even remember how much of the sleeve, like I did, I know, some, because you know, as you, as knitters do, or at least as I do, I keep thinking the more rows I knit, maybe I'll change my mind and I will like it, right? And, um, anyway, yeah. And so I finally came to the conclusion that I did not like it. So I stopped knitting on it and I have to find needles. So there you go. Oh, Teresa, yes, you started in Afghan. Oh, that was cross stitching. Oh, it had cross stitching on it. It started when my son was six and he's now 35. Um, oh, you do have it out to finish it. Oh, wow. Okay. So, hey, Teresa, you just may have the oldest whip of all. You will have to. Um, yes. Okay. Keep an eye out because we, we may do a little bit of chat about that in the Facebook group too. Or you can go leave a comment in the Fiber Friends podcast with <laughs> with how old your whip is. Um, yeah, congratulations. You have just beat Cheryl. <laughs> I don't know. Is that something you is that something you want to win for? I don't know. Well, I guess you might as well. If it's a if it's an old one, you might as well um I don't know. You might as well be able to say you won something, right? Uh, may, you know what, Anne? Don't, 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 uh, I know, don't tease me here because I, I do, I do do that. Lots of times I will just run over to Little, um, little Red Mitten or go over to London Yarns and just get a new needle because it is a lot easier just to go buy a new needle than to try to find one that is not already occupied on another project. I know, I know. I can hear you guys saying, Louise, finish something, get your needles back. Well, I know. I, I should. But knowing what I should do and what I do sometimes are not always the same thing. But um, anyways, yeah. I will have to figure out, but I think I, I would like that. I would like to get that, that sleeve, at least get a sleeve done. I would be happy with that. So does anybody have anybody else thought about what they would do for the get her done challenge? So why don't we, we've got, you know, maybe like another 10 minutes here to chat. So if you want, you can type in the comment what you think you might do for the get her done challenge and, or what you're knitting on now. I know we've got the whole week ahead of us before the get her done challenge starts. So <laughs> Susanna, Antoinette, I say buy a new needle. Oh my gosh, Antoinette, you don't have to ask me twice. And I think stores are opening up here on Friday, which is that not just perfect timing. So maybe I can, oh, Jocelyn's follow your heart, go buy new needles. <laughs> You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for making me not feel guilty that I should. I know, just go buy needles, right? It makes me happy. It'll support the yarn shop. It is less hassle. It is a win all the way around, right? Plus I get new needles. I know, which is always a fun thing. Oh, Mary, you hope to finish your summer tea? Perfect. It is like the perfect time to get that finished, right? Because now you can wear it. Mary, I don't know where you are right now, but we are in a heat wave. It is hot. So yeah, summer tops are a good thing. Yeah, support local business. Absolutely, Lisa. Buy, yeah, support small business, buy the needles. You're right. I'll just, I'll just buy them even if I can find them, which who am I kidding? I can't. So I will just go buy needles. I'll have to figure out what size. Yeah. I need and I think I will place a little order at Little Red Mitten and I can do a curbside pickup on Saturday. So because I'm sure Little Red Mitten, they have not been open at all this last year, even when we've had spurts and spells where stores could be open, they have always chosen not to be and just do virtual shopping appointments and curbside pickup and everything. So I'm totally fine with that. Um, so I can do that. Jocelyn, blanket squares for you tonight. Yes, because that is, you. Jocelyn's got this huge, huge project goal for that she needs to get done for July 1st. Jocelyn, you encourage me to go big. Go big. Always go big. <laughs> what is that, Amber? I think you should be Dory. She has short-term memory loss. 
I, I could probably fit into that category. Oh, and when you're working on the summer tea too. Look at that. See, it is just, it is the perfect time to be working on nice, on nice summer knits, isn't it? So for you guys who are working on summer tops, are they um, a cotton or a bamboo? What do you guys think about using a sock weight, a wool sock weight yarn? What does everybody think? Does I think that, would that still be too hot? Do you think? Oh, Oops. Oh, Amber. And I saw Zakia here. Zakia, you're finishing up a pair of shorties. Oh my gosh. You are like on a sock knitting kick here, girl. Yes. Because you had your grandma's socks, right? Back on the needles for the cow. Oh, perfect. So yes. So you'll finish your grandma's for the, for the get her done. Awesome. Wintry fairy shawl. Amber. Okay. So wintry fairy shawl is what you're working on. Oh, that's right. Um, yes, that's right. Yes. For, yes. Because they're all kind of, yes. Carrie and Jolene are kind of at high risk and yeah. And it's fine. I mean, London Yarns has never opened for in-store in shopping either. And yeah, and actually come to think it, Knit Stitch has, she has never opened either. So we have never had any local yarn shops open for quite a while. I'm kind of getting kind of getting used to the whole online or call down and uh, and just order and pick up. Okay, so Susanna, you have a kit for Roxy. Oh, Roxy the hippo that you're gonna make. Oh, a prima cotton, nice. Gray's a hundred gram skein, and there are two mini skeins, pink and one blue. Ah, that is cute. Oh, who wants it? Oh, you will gift, gift the pattern. Oh, that's wonderful, Susanna. Oh, okay. So Antoinette, you are doing yours at a sock yarn. Okay. So and that's what I really want to do. My next summer top, I want to just do it out of sock yarn. Hi, Emma. You're, oh, you're working on the, oh, a soft toy from your favorite TV show when you were a kid. Oh, fan that is so fantastic. Which one is it? Just about finished with the back. Oh, that's exciting. Progress. Step by step by step, right? Mary, you're using Drops Bell. Oh, so it's a cotton viscose and linen. Nice. The Anchor Summer Tea. Okay. Zakia, oh my gosh, I had no, I knew you have done like tons. I had no idea this was pair number 14. Holy moly. Oh, Susanna, so you're not going to make it. So you're just going to, oh, so you'll give the whole thing, the pattern, the whole kit to somebody who would make it. All right. Is anybody interested? It knits up better than the cotton. Okay, Antoinette, that is good to know. Because I have never done any, never, hmm. I don't think, I don't think I have ever done any of my summer tops in sock yarn. I've always gone for, you know, like what, a traditional cotton or a, or a hemp. I don't know as I've ever done anything in bamboo. Um, but I don't know. I just, sometimes I find cotton to be really heavy and still feel warm. So I would really like, I want to try wool and see. Oh, Susanna, you will mail it. All right. So if anybody's interested in the hippo. Bag puss. He was a, oh, a saggy cloth cat. Oh my gosh, Emma, that would be fantastic. And what, and good memories. It will, it will bring you right. I love that. I love that. Oh, well, everybody's working on such fun projects. I hope everybody has a great knitting week, you guys. I hope those, the week here is supposed to be hot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it feels like we have jumped right in to July. Last week, they had frost warnings out, and it was getting down to, at night to like two degrees. And now we were, I don't know, what were we, like 33 degrees or 40 degrees with the humidex this week. Crazy. So it is definitely summer knitting time for sure. 
So hopefully we'll be able to get some nice weather outside, sitting in the shade or in the breeze. Okay, oh, Amber, so you're saying bamboo is fun, it's light, and it keeps you warm in the winter. Oh, does it? See, I didn't know how, like I know silk is really, really a warm fiber and probably cool in the summer. Oh, Sabrina, oh, Sabrina, you're making a granny square coat for the winter. That is a fun project. Oh, there you go, Susanna. Jocelyn is saying that she would she would love the hippo pattern and kit. Jocelyn, that would be awesome. I can't wait to see you knit that up. Was it knit or crochet? I guess it doesn't really matter. But um, I was just thinking it for a second. I had I opened the window to get just a nice breeze in here, and I was like, "Do I hear rain?" I'm not sure if I hear rain or not. It would be nice if it rained. Water my garden for me. Okay, so Justin's saying lightweight wool fingering or lace is lighter and breathes better than the heavier dense cotton. See, Jocelyn, that's exactly what I was thinking too. But linen blend, oh, but linen, but go linen blends are nice for summer tops. Okay. See, and that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I thought there's no way a, a lightweight, like Justin's saying, a sock yarn could be any warmer than a heavier cotton. So I think my next summer top is going to be some sock yarn. Maybe some, maybe some Patton's Croix. <laughs> okay, so what's this? Oh, jo Suzanne, you know Jocelyn's address, okay. Oh, Audrey, hey Audrey, your kitty is knitted, you just need to stuff it. Did you do beans? Did you see my beans? Did you do beans or did you do another one? There's beans. Oh, it was, oh, Karen Cotton, if that's what it was. Okay. Oh, Audrey, you're working on a sock tonight. Lovely. Oh, Suzanne, that's cool there. Oh, well, maybe your, your cool air will come here and, and cool us down later in the week. I know. Yeah, Amber, Amber and I are, are like a 10 minute drive from each other and it is hot. It is hot. It is feels like the middle of the summer heat wave. Oh, Audrey, you purchased a sweater kit from Wool Thistle? Oh, sweater kits. Lovely. <laughs> and yes, I know. Who would have tons of Croy? Somebody who has tons and tons of Croy that they could use up and be perfect for a summer top. I don't I know. I wonder who that would be. Granny D, how are you? Happy Monday. How has your week been so far? Hopefully it's only one day in, so hopefully it's great, right? <laughs> Mary, you were thinking the same. I know. I know. I have a little bit to choose from here, right? Lisa, working on socks. Oh, yeah, summer sock camp. That started June 1st, didn't it? Exciting. So many fun things going on this summer. Oh, Audrey, you knitted your own creation kitty. Started the ears like, t oh, really? And then increased. You'll have to post a picture, Audrey, in the Fiber Friends group so we can all see it. Oh, poly, I know. I used, I went through tons of polyfill. I'm going to place an order though, or maybe I'll just go to Michael's on Friday now that we can shop in person and uh, pick up some polyfill. And I'm going to order my safety eyes too. Oh, Granny D, yes. We're doing good other than, because Granny Dean, remind me, are you in Texas? I always, I always think of you and Jill as being both in Texas. Um, but you are definitely in the South, aren't you? And I just think, man, it's got to be probably almost as hot here as it is where you guys are. It is, it is pretty warm. Oh, Mary, you're heading off? Yes. Oh, we are right at the hour mark. So yeah, we will... We will just end up, wind up here. I know, Beans the Cat. Who knew that I would become a, oh, North Carolina. Oh, so you're not as far south as I thought you were. Okay. Anyways, who knew I would become a toy knitter? Granny D, do you knit toys or do you crochet? Are you more a crocheter than a knitter? Okay, it was in the low 90s, I think. So, Okay. I'm not exactly sure what the conversion is, but we're probably close. Not So low 90s is still hot, right? Well, maybe we were actually hotter than you because it was, it was hot. 
<laughs> Anyways, that's okay with the weather. It comes and goes, right? It is what it is. Oh, so you're getting some rain now? That'll be nice. That'll cool it off. That's what we need here. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and chatting. I've got lots to work on this week. So everybody, Fiber Friends Challenge starts Friday. So you can go over to the Fiber Friends Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In group on Facebook. If you're not already a member there, search it on Facebook. Answer the questions because you have to answer at least one question for, so we know that you're a real person and we'd love to welcome you in to that group. So you can start posting over there what your project is or if you have a goal for what you would like to achieve, kind of like the sock Easter sock knitting weekend, right? If you've got an afghan and if you just want to say you want to get six inches knit on it over the 10 days, that works. Um, yeah, so start thinking about that for Friday. And I have got a new project to cast on tonight, guys. I can't wait. I know where my needle is for this project, so I don't have to do any searching. I'm going to go cast on and I will post some pictures on Instagram of this and last week's project, which is the sky. So I'll give you lots of updates as I, as the days go by over on Instagram. So everybody have a fantastic week. I'll be live again Friday night in the Fiber Friends Facebook group. If you want to join me over there. And if not, I will see you back here next Monday with some more finishes. So have a great weekend, great week and a great weekend. And hopefully you find some time to do some knitting outside and get lots done. Maybe you're starting something new. You can put, you can always post over on Instagram, new start Monday knits, and we can all cast on something new together. Have a great week. Happy knitting, everybody. See you next Monday.